The RSA-3 missile stands as one of the most intriguing developments in South Africa's aerospace and defense history, symbolizing both ambition and secrecy during a pivotal era of technological advancement. Designed originally under the Republic of South Africa's space program, the RSA-3 was intended as a satellite launch vehicle but also carried the unmistakable dual-use potential of a ballistic missile. Emerging in the late 1980s, its development reflected a nation striving for self-reliance in strategic defense and space capabilities at a time when international sanctions and isolation forced South Africa to innovate internally. The missile's design drew heavily from earlier collaboration with Israel's Jericho series, yet it incorporated significant domestic engineering contributions that made it distinctly South African. Standing approximately 17.6 meters tall and weighing around 26,000 kilograms, the RSA-3 was a two-stage, solid-fueled rocket capable of delivering small payloads into low Earth orbit or, theoretically, over intercontinental ranges if modified for military use. During its development, the RSA-3 project was conducted under high secrecy at the Overberg Test Range near Bredesdorf, a facility built specifically for missile and rocket testing. The program was managed by Hotec, a subsidiary of Armscore, South Africa's state-owned arms manufacturer. Despite being publicly described as a peaceful space launch vehicle, the RSA-3 carried clear parallels to long-range ballistic missiles in its propulsion, staging, and guidance systems. Its solid fuel propulsion offered quick launch readiness and reduced logistical complexity compared to liquid-fueled systems, giving it strategic potential. The rocket's first stage produced significant thrust, using composite propellants similar to those found in advanced missile programs of that era. The second stage provided sustained acceleration, capable of placing small scientific satellites into orbit, though no official orbital launch was ever confirmed before the project's termination. The RSA-3's development occurred in an environment of geopolitical tension. South Africa faced increasing pressure from the global community over its nuclear weapons program and apartheid policies. This isolation forced domestic engineers and scientists to push boundaries without direct foreign assistance, leading to rapid advances in materials science, guidance control systems, and propulsion design. The missile's testing phases reportedly included several suborbital launches to evaluate stage separation, thrust stability, and aerodynamic performance. Each test contributed valuable data toward achieving orbital capability, but by the early 1990s, as apartheid came to an end and South Africa began its political transformation, the government decided to dismantle its nuclear and missile-related programs. The RSA-3 project was officially cancelled around 1994, and most of the hardware, blueprints, and testing components were destroyed or archived to comply with international non-proliferation commitments. Despite its cancellation, the RSA-3 remains a testament to South Africa's technical ingenuity and strategic ambition. Few nations in the Global South have successfully developed large-scale rocket systems capable of orbital flight. The RSA-3 represented a potential leap in both aerospace technology and national defense, placing South Africa among a handful of countries with the expertise to design and construct such a complex system from the ground up. Its aerodynamic shape was sleek and functional, featuring four stabilizing fins at the base, a smooth cylindrical body with distinct stage separation lines, and a pointed nose cone optimized for high-speed flight through varying atmospheric pressures. The structure combined lightweight composite materials and precision-engineered metal alloys, designed to withstand extreme thermal and mechanical stress during launch and re-entry. The political shift in the 1990s transformed South Africa's defense philosophy from one of strategic deterrence to transparency and cooperation. Under international supervision, South Africa voluntarily dismantled its nuclear arsenal and suspended all ballistic missile-related work. The facilities once used for RSA-3 testing were converted to civilian aerospace and satellite research purposes. In a symbolic gesture, South Africa became the first nation to both develop and voluntarily abandon a full-scale missile and nuclear weapons program. The RSA-3's legacy therefore lives on not as a weapon of war but as a marker of technological capability and a reminder of the delicate balance between scientific progress and global responsibility. Modern-day analysts often compare the RSA-3's engineering principles to other space launch vehicles of its era, such as Israel's Shabbat and Europe's Ariane family, noting both similarities and differences in propulsion configuration and payload capacity. Had the program continued, 
the RSA-3 could have evolved into a reliable small satellite launcher, potentially giving South Africa independent access to space decades before similar private sector initiatives emerged. The project's cancellation, while politically necessary, meant that South Africa's early momentum in rocket science was largely lost. Nevertheless, the expertise gained during the RSA-3 era laid the foundation for future contributions to satellite technology and peaceful space research within the country. Today, the RSA-3 remains a subject of fascination among aerospace historians, engineers, and defense analysts. Photographs and documents from the program are rare, and much of what is known comes from declassified reports and the recollections of those who worked on it. The missile represents a unique intersection of ambition, secrecy, and transformation, a machine born from military necessity that ultimately became a symbol of a nation's moral and technological evolution. In visual depictions, the RSA-3 is often portrayed as a tall white rocket with a smooth metallic body, standing under bright sunlight against the backdrop of South Africa's rugged landscape or launching in a burst of smoke and flame. The presence of the South African flag beside it in modern recreations serves as both a patriotic emblem and a reminder of the country's complex history with power and innovation. The story of the RSA-3 missile is therefore not merely about a rocket, but about a nation's journey through isolation, ambition, and transformation. It demonstrates how technology can exist on the edge between creation and destruction, between the pursuit of knowledge and the quest for control. In that tension, South Africa found not only its limits but also its strength, the ability to turn from secrecy to openness, from military dominance to scientific cooperation. The RSA-3 remains frozen in time as both a marvel of engineering and a cautionary tale of how closely the dreams of space exploration can mirror the ambitions of warfare.